So this is the problem. This is not the house that we are building. We are halfway done with building our house. This is the rental that we live in. We still cannot install batteries into our home. So Anchor sent me their new batteries. Oh, there goes Claire. She's going to dance right now. Bye, Claire. <laughs> Anchor sent me their new batteries and I'm going to install them at my sister's house and my brother-in-law's house to test them out and see how they work. But also as part of this video, I'm gonna travel all the way from Utah to California because Anchor is the sponsor of a thing called the Electrified Expo. And I'm hoping that we can see very many cyber trucks. Welcome to my sister's house. So these are all the boxes that we've got. This is for the installer to be able to put the things in the wall. And then we've got two big boxes with batteries inside of them. And this is where we're thinking of doing it. We've got an electrical panel currently on the wall. And just to make it easy on you guys, we're gonna install it just like this. There we go. <laughs> it is installed, check it out. Anchor Solix. 3,800, we have not just one, but two. We had to put a different breaker in here that has all of the things that we are backing up. So this kit doesn't back up the entire house, it backs up the things that we chose to have on here. I do love that there's a display on here. You can push the display button, and when we turn off the power or when we're filling this full of energy, you can see the updates live. That is something that you don't get on the Tesla Powerwalls. This has ports on the front of it that you can charge your devices on, but then also on the side, if I turn it, you can see we've got all different kinds of plugs for you to plug things in. And obviously it is rolling around because it's portable. Oh, there's another one of these. You're a monster. If we want to unplug it and take it and use it somewhere, how do we do it? There we go, we unplug it just like you would unplug a car. There's this little latch that you push a little bit and now we are rolling. Pretty easy, it does have an easy tow handle on the top. What kind of things in your garage could you roll this in and charge? An angle grinder? <laughs> a uh, portable work light. I'll your stuff. How about a really cool, oh, electric motorcycle. And it takes a massive, charger because it is a big bike. 944 watts output. Three and a half hours of battery remaining, which is going to be more than enough for this. Concrete mixing machine. You get the idea, right? Very, very useful. Yep, yep, it works. We are connected. We used a couple of percent while we were out there and now we are charging the battery back up, back up to where it needs to be. Now this is the interesting thing. She does not have any solar on her house. Our new house that we are building, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We do not have solar on it. We don't plan on having solar, but we do plan on some battery storage. Now it's at 109 degrees up here today on this roof. That is uh, very hot. I'm gonna put right here what is in Celsius for you that are international. When it comes to natural disasters, there is a chance that we could have an earthquake here at some point that could knock out the power. But what more commonly happens is we do have a lot of summer rainstorms and it has lightning. The day after I filmed this video, my sister had the power go out at her house. And at first she thought something was wrong with the way that we installed the system. And she was nervous to call me. So before she called me, she called the city and she was like, hey, does there happen to be a power outage? And they're like, yes, we're sorry. We're sending somebody up to your neighborhood right now to figure it out. Her neighbors were literally outside on their phone, confused and calling the city. And so she went from being disappointed that things weren't working properly in her house because of the way that we installed something to being super excited because her refrigerator, her freezer, one of her AC units and many of the lights and her internet were all running in the house because of the battery backup system that we put into her house. Kind of cool because the power doesn't go out all the time here. Yes, it's hot and yes, it does go out but it just happened to go out the day after. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Real life use, it worked. So having the peace of mind that comes from getting battery storage on your house isn't just reserved for somebody that lives in a natural disaster zone. Now that's a definitely a plus, and it's also not reserved for somebody that has solar panels. So the question is, what things did we connect to these battery backups? Which things did we deem essential? Well, I'm gonna start this camera right here. Boom. This camera is going, that camera is going. They are synced up, you can see me talking. I'm going to go and flip the breaker. Watch what happens. Off. This air conditioner did turn off because we don't have it connected. Did it actually work? Well, first thing you notice, we walk into the kitchen. The lights are on in the house. Oh, look at this. We got tons 
8.9 hours right now we can run the house, 9.3 hours. These are the things that we chose to have running. We specifically left this room power on because there is the modem, essential things. Power is still off, but look at this. The house will stay cool. If you had solar, we could just have the solar running the house and then these could be charging up during the daytime. We did like a 48 hour off grid challenge one time and it was really helpful to have both solar and the battery systems on our house. Now let's say that the power goes out for greater than 24 hours and these things go down to zero. That could happen. Benefit of these versus the other Solix that we put on my friend Derek's house is we could literally unplug these, drive them to somewhere across town that actually has energy, recharge these battery packs, it'd probably take a few hours, but we could recharge these, bring them back to the house, plug them into the house and we've got energy again, even though we don't have solar. Let's get the grid turned back on and let's get these batteries, which are now at 96%, charged back up. And let me show you what it looks like when you flip on the power again. From anywhere in the world that you have phone connection, you can look and see right now, we are using 2.25 kilowatt hours and we are charging the Anchor Solix by 3.92 kilowatt hours. Let me show you what happens when we unplug from the grid. This thing doesn't fit, so I put it on my head. Oh, there we go. The grid is turned off and in the app, we are seeing that. Right now, the home is using 1.64 kilowatts of energy and it's entirely coming from the Solix F3800. Oh, I really like this portable battery storage system. If you're interested in it, you can look at the link in the description to learn more. So I just parked here in the parking garage at the Electrify Expo, and one of the side quests is going to be, how many Cybertrucks will I see today? A Cybertruck here, and then a Foundation Series Cybertruck. This one's super tall, that one's super tall. I haven't even left the parking lot yet, and I've already seen two. Let me know in the comments right now in this video, how many Cybertrucks do you think that I will see? And don't you dare skip ahead in this video to find out exactly how much it is, but I will give something away to somebody that has the right comment. Time to go to the convention, let's go. This is actually really cool, and I don't think you would see this in Utah or some other states. People had to pay $20 to get in here today in order to see all of the electric stuff that's here. It makes me a lot more optimistic about the future of electric stuff, especially considering when you read the news, a lot of times people are like, oh, electric stuff is dying away and there's not much interest. Tens of thousands of people are here today just to look at the electric stuff. This actually might be the car that I drove in last week up in Seattle. <laughs> look at that rally car. Three out of the five cars that are here, I literally drove Fun fact for you, BMW has been making electric cars for a very long time. I have never actually driven an electric BMW. Now in Japan, I rode in this exact one as an Uber and it was insanely cool, but never actually driven one. Oh, another company I've never driven, Fisker. Look who even showed up, Tesla. The company that doesn't do marketing is here marketing their cars. It's time to add to the Cybertruck count. We got one right there and one right there. So we have now seen four, two officially at the Tesla booth, two in the parking garage. That blue color, like that is sick. Look, I know the Cybertruck is controversial and all, and some people love it or they hate it, but there is a line of people that are ready to go sit inside of it and look at it. It's undeniable how much impact this has had on people, how different this is than any other car in the world. I do appreciate how it looks, I really do. And if I got one, it would definitely be the blue color. Look at that, we even have the Rivian R3 on display. This is a car that was a one more thing at the event that I went to about a month ago. They released the R3, the timeline on this is like years out. This was just kind of like a, hey, we might make this in the future. It turns out people liked this more than they liked the R2 at the event. The R2 is coming out pretty soon. So I think Rivian needs to do a few things to get this one out a little bit sooner because especially in Europe, this thing's gonna crush it. As of filming this video, it is June 1st. I just spent the last two days in Seattle, you may have seen the video already, with the refreshed version of this, the generation two. I have to talk quiet because I signed a bunch of documents that I can't tell people about. So it's kind of funny to see this version and I know something better is coming in a few days and they can't talk about it here and none of these people know it, but still really cool. Depending on the angle that you look on this car, it changes colors. You see purple, you see green, you see pink, you see all the colors on this. And also the suspension has an air suspension. So they use the front trunk for that. No, that is not nitrous for some drag race from Fast and the Furious. That's so that it can get low like this and look super cool. Man, that color is something else. We got a smoke machine underneath this Tesla Model 3. Look inside of this. I think that's for the suspension. I don't really know, but that is some kind of car. What in the world? Unbelievable. Look at the inside of this guy. What in the Tesla? 
Look at the carpet inside of there. Look at all this stuff. In the back with the big old speakers. It's pretty amazing right there. Not my style, I wouldn't drive that, but I can appreciate it. Cybertruck number five is here and it's towing a race car. So this is the upfitted version for unplugged performance, carbon fiber, the, all the different upgrades on it with the bar in the front. This would be an incredible SWAT team car, police car. I bet it will be a SWAT car. They're gonna start making Teslas as SWATs. <laughs> Cybertruck number six that we've seen here. This one goes from red to black. Such a cool wrap on this. Actually, no, this is Cybertruck number six because we just saw the unplugged one. So six Cybertrucks we have seen here. I think we're gonna see double digits today, but you gotta give your comments down below. They said, look in the back. These guys do not like pumping gas. How fitting is this? We've got the Cybertruck right here. Adventures of Starman right on the other side. There's my friend, Eli. Let's go sneak up on him. Can you tell me about Starman and what this comic book is? Oh my God. Look at this guy. We got Eli, we found him. He has his own booth next to an incredible Cybertruck. So when we first met, this was just one episode. He made this comic, Woo! The Adventures of Starman. What's the story about? Uh, it's basically real life. It documents Starman, Elon Musk loading Starman into this roadster and blasting him out into space. In fact, that was a boring tunnel. And, I remember uh, that. He yeah, got signed by tunnel. Elon at the boring he, tunnel he event. He did. I've actually got it with me in the car over there. This is now an entire universe. We've got five episodes, we've got coloring books. We've got a digital card game. Killing it. Yep. Love it. What makes the Cybertruck even more rare? This is Franz. He is the designer of all things Tesla. And then you've got uh, Jay Leno. You know, you know Jay Leno, right? Cybertruck number seven is here. Cybertruck number eight is here. Look at this wrap. I don't know if that's matte or glossy. It's kind of in between the two. It's kind of gritty feeling. Cybertruck number nine. Can we get to double digits? I've been here for about an hour and I've seen 10 Cybertrucks, but I'm nearing the end of the Expo Center. I will find a 10th Cybertruck. Custom interior for a Tesla Model X. It looks really nice, and it even comes with your own Tesla tequila in the front trunk. Even all of the speakers are powered by Anchor. Look at that, everything is powered by Anchor. I'm gonna try to make it to the Austin Electrify Expo, so if you go to that one, see me there. I don't know that I'm gonna be manning the Anchor booth like I am right now. Like I really am manning this, along with um, a supervised Anchor employee that's watching to make sure that I don't break anything, which is good. <laughs> I'm glad I came down here. Thank you, Anchor, for bringing me down here. I'm really grateful that we were able to do this and this YouTube channel allows us to help out some of our friends and family. Let me know in the comments, what system do you think we should do inside of our new home? I am genuinely curious to see what you say. <laughs> I've never operated one of those before. That was fun. Woo. Okay, as much as I love standing out here in the heat with a metal thing on my head, I might also like, Still some snacks while I'm in here because it's in the pantry. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. 